Hello, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of Thinking Outside the Bank. We are talking about getting business funding today, how to zig in a zagging world. I also want to say uh, hello and a big shout out to all the folks following us uh, in our webinar. Uh, Raul, can always count on you. We know you're there. Welcome. Thanks for being there. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, get this party started. So, we got a lot to talk about today. Who are we? My name is Joseph Smith. This is Ray Fleming. We are the Wise Guys and Ties. Wise in the ways of helping you understand how to start, build, and grow a business. And we help uh, a lot of people go along that journey. And so today what we're talking about is how can we get funding? I mean, there's a lot of crazy things going out there. And we're going to cover one of the surefire ways that any business can get funding today. So uh, at any point, if you want to reach out to us, you can call 888-524-9273. Our email address is on the screen, as well as you can go to our website to schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one consultation with either myself or Mr. Ray Fleming. All right. So conditions are changing fast, folks. I mean, what's going on in the world today? I mean, we've got states shutting down. Non-essential businesses are shut down. Gatherings uh, are limited. People are wearing masks and sheltering in their home. Stores are having trouble keeping stock on their shelves. Customers are nervous. So a lot of people aren't buying and spending. And then business credit. Business credit's the solution, folks, because business credit is independent of all of these economic pandemic situations. And so that's really what we're going to cover today. We're going to talk about how the, the benefit of getting business credit. And we talk about business credit all the time, but when you're thinking about, oh my goodness, how am I going to get funding for my business? Or I mean, everybody is crazy about the SBA, getting the PPP loan or the oh, yeah. EIDL. Uh, a lot of people are out there trying to find ways to get funding. And uh, let's talk about, uh, what about cash flow based funding? I mean, has that just all dried up? Uh, a lot of it has. Yeah. A lot of it has. And a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, personal credit is starting to tighten down. And so a lot of people are are really concerned, how can I get access to funding? Mm -hmm. Well, business credit, and this is why we're really promoting it today, business credit is a surefire way to do this because it is a time-honored system. And it it, it is a system. It's step-by-step. And we're going to reveal, like we do many times, the steps that you need to do and how simple it is. And we're also going to go over uh, uh, some of the underwriting guidelines to help you get started. You've got to take that first step. That is so critical, it's so important. So let's talk about business credit. See, business credit is built off of your EIN and not your SSN. So if anybody's like, what is that? EIN is your employer identification number. That is the tax ID assigned to your business by the IRS. Your social security number is your tax ID that is assessed to you personally. And that's how that's how you build credit. So your personal credit consumer report is all centered around your social security number. But your business credit that you build, your business credit report is built off of your EIN number. You know, I was working, Ray, uh, with a, a with a client that we had just yesterday. This is a multi-million dollar business. We're talking like they bring in $5 million a year and they have no business credit, no corporate credit at all. That's, wow, that's, that's impressive. And they've been in business for years. I mean, this is like very few people, Not, I mean, they, they know about business credit, they've kind of heard about it, but they don't know what it is or how to get it. Mm, yes, yes, even at that level too. I mean, the only way to grow to that size is to really leverage your personal credit or other people's personal credit. Mm-hmm. And at some point, you start reaching the point where you can't expand anymore because you're over leveraged. That's right. So if you ever want to take it to the next level and become a $20 million company or $100 million or or more, you have to add in components like business credit, bank credit, and personal credit combined with collateral and cash flow to make all of this happen. So when it comes to business credit, businesses use or need to use their business credit to buy goods and services. And but see, what here's what happens. A lot of people, when they start their business, they use their personal credit. So they put inquiries on their personal credit report and they And that begins to, especially when you get a lot of inquiries over a short period of time, that really tanks your score. And then we don't even have to go into utilization and and mix of credit and and age of accounts. All of these things that you try to do to build your business credit 
ends up hurting your personal credit. But when you use your business credit, the great thing is, is it does not affect your personal credit score at all. Business and personal credit scores are very different. And usually what helps one credit score hurts the other mm, and, and vice yeah. versa. And so what we want to do is we want to try to keep them separated so that you can actually benefit by having both. You can use them synergistically, but most people hurt their personal credit to build business credit and they don't, they make some mistakes along the way. And then their business credit ends up hurting. <laughs> I mean, it ends up, they end up hurting each other. So, but let's talk about some advantages. So a lot of the things that we're going to talk about, especially with vendors and building vendor credit, you can get personal accounts with a lot of vendors. There's a lot of vendors out there where you can get a personal account with them. But here's the great thing, like it, or let me put it to you this way. Can you go to, let's say, I'll just pick a store out there, Walmart. Can you go to Walmart, get a Walmart card, and say, you know what? I like this Walmart card so much, I think I'll get another Walmart card. Can I get two Walmart cards in my name? No, not, <laughs> not necessarily. I mean, if they had like a personal line and then a business line, you could do that. But not to Right. And so... Um, and so where we're, uh, where we're at with that is you get one card per account per vendor uh, for your name. Right. But when you have um, a business, you can get another account. At that. So I could have a personal account at Walmart, mm -hmm. and then I could get a business or a corporate account at Walmart. Right. And that way I could double my purchasing power. Exactly. And that's what's awesome. So business credit uh, scores – when your business pays its bill on, bills on time. So you, your business credit builds its score every time you pay your bills on time. But personal credit, you only score your personal credit if you pay your bills on time, if your utilization is low, if you keep your inquiries down, if your mix of accounts is good, and if your age of accounts is long. I mean, it just, it's so hard to build personal credit fast. I mean, it takes so much time and it's so easy to bring that score down. But with business credit, so simple. Pay your bills on time. That's, I mean, it is. It's, it is so easy. Yes. But, but, but I mean, I mean, it's sometimes for some people that's hard. But with with uh, personal credit, you've got to track five factors, and they're all kind of working against you. Mm. Like if you want to go fast, then they're all working against right. you. But with the business credit, if all you have to do is manage your payments on time, either pay on time or pay early, and that's all it takes to build business credit, you can do it fast. Excellent. So. Building business credit. Now, folks, this is something that I can't stress enough because we get a lot of clients who think, man, I, I signed up for your program. I got you guys. I got your team. And so when's my business credit going to show up? When's the ferry going to come and magically, poof, I have business credit now. That's not how it works, folks. It, it, building business credit is not an automated process. It's not an automatic process. You must actively build it. You build business credit by applying for accounts. Once you get an account, you use the account. You make a purchase. Then you get invoiced, and then you pay the invoice. It sounds kind of mundane, but that's the process. We want to build up to 14 accounts at a minimum that are all reporting positively over at least a six-month period of time. So I get a lot of questions of like, well, I had this one account, and I, and, and I bought something uh, four months ago. Is that... The, the best thing, let me let, try and simplify this. If you get an account, use it every month until you have built up to 14 accounts. That's the best way I can put it. Now, can you make a purchase and then it shows up on your report and will that count over a six month period of time? Yes. However, uh, when we're talking about business credit, there is no law that governs the reporting of business credit. Meaning on the personal side, there is the FCRA, the Fair Credit Reporting Act, which requires that all credit be reported every month accurately by your creditors. But in the business side, there is no such rule. So businesses sometimes could wait up to three months before they report your business. Mm -hmm. And while you're waiting three months, are they going to make sure they got all three of those months? So what I say is make a purchase every month because if they miss a month, at least if you made it every month, they will report at least one of those months. Right. Right. And then so, but that's usually with your starter accounts. We'll talk about net 30 accounts in a, in a moment. But uh, once you get to revolving store cards and the actual credit cards, that's, they're really good about reporting every month. It's just when we're getting started, those initial accounts, 
You just got to make purchases every single month until they start reporting. Then once they're reporting, then you can focus on building the other accounts and get it up to 14 accounts that are all reporting. But I get a lot of people that ask me and, you know, like, well, what if I made a purchase? I don't know if it's reporting, but it was this many months ago. Like, I don't want to play the what if game. Just make a purchase every month until you see it reporting. That's the simplest way I can put it. Now, the easier, I mean, building business credit is easier and faster than personal credit because of some of the things we talked about. Personal credit. I mean, think about what is your credit score right now today? You have a number right now in your head. You, you looked it up probably on Credit Sesame or Credit Karma or something like that. You know what your credit score is. How long would it take you to build that credit score to a perfect credit score? I mean, we're talking about a lot of time. Yeah, it could take a long time. And so that's that's the thing that with business credit, once you get started with business credit, I mean, in as little as three to four months, you could start generating um, a pretty significant score. Um, so uh, the whole process of bu building business credits, it starts with vendor credit. It's the huge, it's the biggest part of the process. It takes the most time but it yields the best results for us in the long run. Now, here's the problem with building business credit. See, uh, well, there's there's a couple of problems with building business credit. Vendors, because remember, there's no FCRA. No one's required to report. So who is going to report? Not a lot of people report. And so that's why it's so huge because you got to find the right vendors that will report, that will report uh, accurately, that will help you build your business credit. Because when you go to apply for accounts, even though very few people actually report, everybody checks your credit. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. how how many people, how many vendors out there are actually reporting? Um, I mean, it fluctuates at any given time, but roughly uh, out of every single business line, credit, everything about banks and everything, seven percent of of all of those accounts. Yeah. Which seven? Is it a consistent seven? Does, well, it, does it fluctuate? It fluctuates, especially in the beginner. The Basically, the, the credit that most people can get these smaller trade lines, the net 30 accounts, only 3% mm -hmm. of those actually. And are those consistent? I mean, meaning like every year, year after year, season after season, yeah. is it? So it's always fluctuating. It's constantly yeah, there's some, changing. There's some that are, you know, that have been consistent for a long period of time, but new ones coming in and out all the time. Absolutely. And then even with the ones that have been consistently there, do their underwriting guidelines stay 100% the same all the no, time? No, they slightly tweak and change. Yeah. And uh, sometimes the, uh, well, you know, this is a little bit higher purchase limits now where some were $25, now they're 50 and then some are moving to 75 or even 100 they keep adding more things that they're checking to more, more hoops for you to jump through. Right. So, yeah. So, I mean, another thing about vendor credit, why it is so huge is because this is how you build business credit apart from using the personal guarantee uh -huh. because everybody wants to do all the steps out of order. I mean, when you think about business credit, someone's like, my bank told me that I'm pre-approved for a business credit card today. Right. Oh yeah. So as is that as you file for a business, you know, uh, Chase and Capital One, they'll be sending you business, you know, pre-authorized business. Credit. Right. Is that but is that real business credit that will report on my EIN to the business credit bureaus? Um, a lot of times, no. A lot of times it's reporting to your personal side and potentially the business. Maybe it reports on the business side, but it definitely. But if you don't have your business on... reporting bureau set up, then it's not reporting. Good point. We're going to talk about that, too, in a minute. So when we're what we're talking about is building business credit in a world that's kind of topsy-turvy crazy and all these things are drying up. Business credit gives you so many advantages if you follow the system. So look, a lot of people want to start at the top, but you can't start at the top. Everybody wants the Visa, the MasterCard, the American Express. They want to get this bank card. They want it to be a high limit card, like 20, 25,000, 50,000. Let's hit the ground running and let's go for it. But that's not how it works. You have to establish a track record of payment. You have to record positive payment experiences, and you have to record a lot of them across uh, 14 different accounts to at least three major business re credit reporting mm -hmm. agencies. So that's another question I get asked, because uh, well, we're going to talk about business credit reporting agencies. Do I only need 14 reporting on one, 
or four or just a total of 14 or reporting if you add them up across all three or do i need 14 on all three the answer is you need 14 on all three <laughs> that's what you're shooting for that's your goal is to get 14 uh, credit accounts reporting on all three major credit bureau, uh, reporting bureaus. And what a lot of people, they, they kind of miss out on it. So, well, I've got uh, six reporting here. I've got 10 reporting there and I've got so many reporting over there. And so when you add this all up, it looks, well, I've got all these accounts. Each reporting bureau, you never, because you never know which lender, which credit issuer is going to check yeah. it. They might only check Dun & Bradstreet or they might check Experian. Whatever mm -hmm. they check, if they see on, say, Experian, say on Dun & Bradstreet, you've got 14 accounts, but on Experian, you only have six. Do you have established business credit? No. No. So that's why your goal is to get 14 on each bureau. So, folks, we know the steps. That's what the wise guys and ties in our business credit builder program is all about. We know the steps, and we know how to do these steps in order. So let's talk about these steps. Let's get started. So... Uh, the whole part about what we do right from the beginning, right from the jump, is we help your business become fundable to vendors and lenders. And what do we mean by that? You have to be put forth that you're a legitimate business. We can't cut corners and go for freebies like emails mm -hmm. and phone numbers. Right. we got to have a legitimate business where our business has real bills that it pays. And this is what helps us put forward the fact that we are – a real business. So you need to have a professional website and email. Now, strictly speaking for building business credit, you don't need a website, but I have to tell you that if you have a professional website and all of the information about your business is on your website, this really helps you build your business credit fast because every lender wants to check and see uh, that they can verify all of your business information on your website. And you absolutely need a professional business email. And, and while I'm talking about all these things, well, who checks? I mean, is there some person out there who's like got a clipboard and checking a professional website, a professional email, a professional phone number? I mean, what's, what's the mechanism that's actually checking? Well, yeah, there's not someone, it's something. Mm -hmm. And that's really, it's just a computer algorithm, computer system, uh, running a check. So if I put a computer algorithm in place, and I set my computer to check and see if your email has in it Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, right, uh, AOL, then I'm going to red flag that as not a legitimate yeah, business. Yeah, definitely. It's like a point system almost where it's like you only are allowed like a few of these little errors. And then all of a sudden that's just straight denial across the board. And then they figure you're unestablished. Right. And so you get to you go in, you apply for an account, you maybe apply online, you get denied, you get some letter. You either get denied straight up or they say you're in review process, you'll be notified in a letter in a week or so. Whenever you hear that, like you'll be notified by mail, it's always a denial. I mean, I've never seen it come back. Yeah, it's, it's always a denial because underwriters have to justify their existence. Right. But by having all of these legitimate things set up when the computer underwriter is checking, uh, the, ver the validity of all of these, this is what shows to a business that you're a real business because people who try to commit fraud or people who are just, they're, they're more of pretenders, uh, they're hobbyists, they're not really legitimate businesses. They don't go and spend and pay for a professional website or spend the money for a professional email or you know pay for an actual business phone line. I mean, come on, that, all that extra money. Let's talk about this, right? Some people ask me, well, what's more important to get a toll-free phone number or to have a local business phone number? What would you say to somebody? Because I get that question all the time. Uh, definitely, you're going to need a local number. A local and, number. Uh, 800 toll-free number is just a bonus. Okay. So when you say bonus, I mean, how important is that bonus when you're building business credit? Um, it could be, uh, it could, depending on the vendor, I mean, it could be pretty significant. And I also got to think about the credibility standpoint of your customers. Mm -hmm. How does that look if, if you have an 800 toll-free number? Right. Well, what major business have you ever done business with that didn't have a toll-free number? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Good point. All right. So once we uh, get started, we have to really work on your fundability. So you need a business bank account. And too many businesses out there 
are sole proprietorships that just use a personal bank account. And that's not really looked at by the lending community as a legitimate business. Mm -hmm. They don't even, even though you have a business, you're running a business, you're making money in your business, lenders don't actually see you as a business. So another thing is, is you have to have all required licenses. I mean, if you're a trucker or if you're in the food industry, um, maybe you're a realtor or salon, or you have to have all of the required businesses licensed at each level, at each jurisdiction. And what's the most, the, not even do, not even do you, not only do you have to have a required business license, but even more important is the business information on your license must match whatever you put on your application for new credit. Mm -hmm. And that leads to the most denials for most people is they either have an old license that's expired right. or they have an old license that's expired with old information or they have a new license. It's a current, but the information that you have, you've moved and you haven't changed or updated your business license. And that leads to a lot of denials that we see. So you also got to get set up with the IRS. Now getting your uh, EIN number is totally free. A lot of sole proprietors go out and get that. But see, what's really important is that you choose an entity like an S Corp or a C Corp or an LLC. And even at that point, I mean, you really got to um, consult with the local professionals. I want to say a CPA or a, a, an attorney to make sure that you choose the right type of business because you want to minimize your risk and maximize your tax savings. And it's, uh, it's, it's very important to pr just protect your business. But once you, once, once you've done that, being a legitimate business, a separate entity, you can actually take advantage of uh, those situations where you have a personal, say, Walmart card and then a corporate card. If I'm a sole proprietor, if I get the personal card, I, my business can't then go get another one because I'm still the same. My, I am the business. That's right. So I couldn't. And then couldn't we even see in a lot of different accounts the, uh, the parent company, you know, there's parent companies that extend credit to a lot of stores or gas or fleet. And sometimes you can trip yourself up if you're not following it, those correctly and applying to the same parent company mm -hmm. too quickly. Right. So that's something else that we really help folks with. We'll put, tell you, Hey, these accounts are associated. So you can only pick one or the other or apply for this one and then wait a month. Before yeah. You I mean, I, I think, I think the easiest way to put it is if you apply for account, you use the account you uh, then get your um, invoice, you pay the invoice, and then you wait for that to actually show up on your credit report. Mm -hmm. Once that whole cycle has completed, then you can go ahead and open another account. That makes sense. But people are too, like, oh, I, I purchased it and I paid it, so now I'll go get one. Well, wait a minute, did it report yet? Mm -hmm. No, no, because you got to give them time in their back office to, to catch up. Right, exactly. Thank you. So, we talked about once you get your your business is legitimately set up, that's great. It, it, it's great. Your business is now ready to go out and get business credit. But you have got to make sure that you set up your DUNS number, your, your DNB account. These, this is like the uh, people who record your business credit. It's like if a tree falls in a forest and no one's there, did it make a sound? You've probably heard that before. But think about this. If you go and you start making uh, business, business credit purchases, but you don't have your DUNS account set up, did your business credit even get recorded? Mm. And that happens to a lot of people because on the personal side, you never went and set up your TransUnion account. That's right. You didn't set up an Experian or an Equifax account. They just automatically got set up for you. But on the business in the business world, you have got to actually do the legwork of setting up your own reporting. Now, I got to also put in there, uh, just a little warning, Dun & Bradstreet, they're going to try and sell you your Dun's number. They're going to try and sell you your, uh, their services. You don't need to pay any money to Dun & Bradstreet for their services. They have great services. If you want to pay for them, you can, but it's not necessary, especially if you follow the steps that Ray and I are laying out here for you. You can just get a free Dun's number and you can do all the work yourself. Now, the way it works is you get a DUNS number, then you have a payment experience, and then you get your Paydex score. In fact, you need to get a total of a, a minimum of three mm -hmm. reporting to generate a score. But we want, how many How many did we say we want to get a, a, a robust, complete 
business credit profile? 14. 14 at a minimum. Now, uh, Equifax, uh, small, small business and experience, uh, experience small business and Equifax. Ah, I got it all mixed up. I'm all twisted. There's uh, Equifax small business and business experience. Uh, they work just like they do on the personal side. They will generate your accounts automatically. So you want to check them to see if they have a business account on you. And if they do, here's what's so important is they pull their information sometimes off of the Dunn and Bradstreet profile, but most of the time they pull it off of a creditor's profile. Mm -hmm. So you applied for a card and they misspelled your name. So now your name is misspelled on Experian's website. And now, and then Dunn and Bradstreet has it the same. And so now you're creating two different accounts for one business. That's going to create some legitimacy errors or potential fraudulent activity and lead to a lot of denials. So you need to check and make sure that the information that's being reported on Equifax and Experian actually matches up because you could do everything right, not make one mistake. Somebody on some other end types in your information wrong, and that's really what's creating a lot of errors. Mm. And I'm telling you, because we get people we work with, and they're like, I'm working with you. I don't know why I'm getting all of these errors. I've done everything you said. And as we just go through it, and it takes time, but we go through, when we get to this step, so um, uh, what happened when you checked your Equifax business profile? What, I didn't do that. Well, what's on your Experian business profile? Uh, I didn't do that either. Well, let's go look. And then that's where we find, did you realize that they're reporting that you're... Man. <laughs> you just you, you bring up a good point because that was happening last week with one of our clients and you know they they had these gas cards they've been using the gas cards they've been paying the gas cards and the gas cards are getting shut down because of fraudulent activity and then all of a sudden they're freaking out and they're like oh no like what's wrong with their profile and i'm checking their profile their business score business score was established there wasn't anything reported even recently and then they're like well what's going on and you know it's a big mess where there were some issues with you know, on some other side, somebody else, you know, messed up, you know, the EIN number mm -hmm. and messed this up. And then all of a sudden the account wasn't fully complete. So they were paying bills, they were starting accounts, but they never even reported. And vigilance, <laughs> vigilance is the, is, is really the highest cost that, that you'll have to pay for building business credit. You've got to watch what's going on because there is no FCRA. There is right. no law that's governing. This is the wild, wild mess. Right. Hey, if that happens, <laughs> it's just a uh, better luck next time. Yeah. Kind of thing. So that's why we, we emphasize so much, you know, make sure you spend the time foundationally. If you already have the business set up, go, go back and review everything before you start building, and, you know, review those documents in depth, have somebody else take a look at them too. Now, a lot of times when you're just starting out a brand new business, there won't be any record. So you just right. got, you've got to push through, establish your, your business credit and go back yeah. mm -hmm. so you move to the next step but if you don't have a biz equifax account uh, or an experience account you can go and set them up yourself mm -hmm. or you can wait for them to start reporting but you need to go back and check those it's very critical now uh here here's where you start you start here when you're building business credit if you're in a crazy economic situation and the world seems to be zigging when you're zagging right and you don't know how can i get access to credit this is where you start. Vendor credit for your business. Net 30 accounts. What does net 30 mean? It means you get product now and then you have 30 days to pay it. It, it, it reminds me of the times when you used to be able to go to the gas station and fuel up first. Right. And then you would go pay. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't work anymore that way. Nope. But that's how the net 30 works. You actually get product without paying like right now. And that's very useful considering what type of business that you're in. If you're in a trucking business and you need fuel, right? And you need to make, you've got- Make that trip, get right. paid. <laughs> exactly. Then you can, it work. Or what about real estate investing? When you've got to do a fix and flip and you know you can put some money and you know you're going to close in 30 days, you get the money and can turn around and pay it. Yeah, you get those, uh, those uh, tenant improvements done so you can get a tenant and actually get paid. Yeah. So- so what you need to generate a score, a Paydex score, is three vendors reporting positively. But uh, when are they going to report? You could make, you could have three months. You could make a, a payment on the first month and then report the first month. Mm -hmm. That would be wonderful. But does it always work that way? Yep. You could be two months and they haven't reported. It could take three months and then all of a sudden they start reporting. But you need to be making purchases each month with them. Now, once you have three reporting on your account, then you get to pay it. Deck score 
And, and Dun and Bradstreet will be calling you and they'll be saying, hey, you've got items that are reporting, but your account is not set up. So when the first vendor starts reporting or the second, they're going to be calling you saying, you need to come, you need to pay to complete your setup. Don't fall for that trap because once you have three accounts reporting, somehow magically your Dun & Bradstreet account gets all set up without costing any money. All right. Now we recommend that you should set up five or more before going on to the next step. And uh, one of the things we want to help you with is get the underwriting guidelines for three starter vendors, right? And so Ray, could you uh, enlighten our folks as to Uline, Quill, and Granger, how they could get started with those? Yeah, I accounts? mean, I could tell them, but sometimes I could just, actually, I could just show them. That would be better. If you want to end your screen, I'll share my screen. All right. All right. Let's, uh, let me share my screen here. Uh, which my browser. Not seeing the screen I want to share. Give me one moment here, folks. And there we go. Perfect. Are you sharing? Uh, doesn't look I'm sharing yet. All right. What about that? Can you see us? Can you see no, us? I can't. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Uh, what I am, what I'm looking at right now, folks, or what you're looking at right now, is our Wise Guys and Ties Business Credit Builder Back Office, what we refer to as the Back Office, and this is basically a system that businesses, business owners use to systematically build their business credit. And everything that we're talking about today, setting up your credibility, establishing your business reports, these are all steps in the process. And then more specifically, we're talking about really what are the vendors and how do you actually get those up and running, these net 30 accounts. Well, in here, we have a whole lot of them. We have about 15 in here. But I just wanted to share with you that some of these you – as you're entering your information to the system, it'll say that you're pre-qualified. And so, for example, you would click on Uline. When you open up Uline, what it does is it brings you into our Uline profile. Now, what is Uline? It has their phone number, their website, it reports to Dun & Bradstreet Experian, and then also the description. So Uline is the leading distributor of shipping, industrial packaging, materials, editorial products. You know something I want to point out right here that I think is really cool? It reports to DMB and Experian. Ooh, yeah. So same. every time we can find one that's getting two, you're getting two payment experiences off of one, one transaction. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Growing two plants with one seed. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you need to actually qualify for that? You need an entity in good standing with the Secretary of State. You need an EIN number with the IRS. Business address that matches everywhere, Dun & Bradstreet number, business license if applicable. We always recommend that you go out and get some type of business licensing for sure. It adds a lot to that credibility. And then we also have business bank account, business phone number that is listed in the national 411. So you got to make sure you're in that national directory. And the application may be approved for Net30 at the time of the order. Upon final review, credit department may change to requiring a, fr a few prepaid orders before the net 30 is granted. Now to apply for this, what you need to do is you need to create your business account. Then you need to place an order and then you need to select net 30 terms and basically put the order through without paying. And then they'll review that. And typically, unless something doesn't line up correctly, for example, uh, what happens a lot is um, I would say the most common thing is um, businesses that are in different states than where you're actually doing business. Mm. I would say that that's one of the biggest mistakes that I see made. Well, I also have seen some people have some issues with the fact that they might use a virtual office. Right. But um, it's not really, as far as I know, like you can't get it. It's just you have to give them a different address to ship. Yeah, it depends on it depends on the virtual office. Um, office that you're using and it depends typically they they look want like a driver's license or something like that just to verify to do, to do a personal credit check no no just to verify identity okay because a lot of accounts now depending on what they sell they 
through because of the Patriot Act, they need to verify identity. Okay. And a lot of times they need some type of um, identification just to verify that you're the business owner. And you well, get, t- tell us about Quill. Yeah, let's see here. Uh, we got Grant. Oh, Quill. Let's go to Quill. All right. So another one that we got in the beginner accounts is Quill. So Quill, here's their phone number. And Dun and Bradstreet. Oh, you know what? Let me go back to Uline because I didn't. I don't think we covered that. Okay. So actually, yeah, we're good on we're good on Uline. Want to make sure that I covered everything on Uline. Good. All right. So Quill. This only reports to Dun and Bradstreet, and it requires a fifty dollar minimum purchase to report, and that's per invoice. Well, let me ask you something. What if I make a purchase and then when you add shipping to it, it comes to fifty dollars? No, it has to be the product, not including shipping. Oh, okay, thank you. It has to be the product, and also it has to be on the same invoice. Okay. So if you order two twenty-five dollar items, but they split the invoice, there's a strong chance that that won't. Work. Oh no, they won't do that to me, really? Seriously? Uh, uh, yes, they will. Oh, All those right, dogs. So if you're not sure what Quill is, it sells office supplies, cleaning supplies, packaging stuff, school supplies, uh, printer ink, stuff like that. Now, special instructions here. A lot of these accounts have special instructions because this is what, you know, what we've discovered. So if you're not given the net 30, they will ask for you to do prepay orders of $100. Normally, any prepaid order don't do not report, but you would need them to have Basically, um, you would need to do those in order to get that net 30 account. Now, net 30 accounts require $50 purchases to report. Sometimes an order is shipped. The customer thinks they're approved, but they may not be. Takes credit department approximately three hours to process applications. So this is important to understand because as you're going through this process, you may place the order and then they end up not shipping it because you hadn't been approved or that they needed more information. So it takes a little bit of time. Usually this can be solved by getting on the phone with them and just talking with them. You'd be amazed on how many problems can be solved just because you get on the phone with somebody. Now, a couple of things you bring up there. So if you're not like established, would uh, you define not being established as they go and they check down in Bradstreet and there's no, and there's no paid ex no. So this is one of those that you can get without having a paid X. Um, as we look here to qualify, what we're going to need is you got to have an entity in good standing. So they want to see that everything lines up with the Secretary of State, that your EIN number you have with the IRS, that you've, your business address matches everywhere. So any public data on your business, there's no discrepancies there. Um, you do need a Dun Brad Street number. Mm-hmm. However, you do need that Dunn's number in that profile with Dunn and Bradstreet, but not necessarily Dunn and Bradstreet for you. And then business license, of course, is going to help add to that credibility. You do need a business bank account. And also new businesses or businesses with no credit history may need to prepay sometimes to get that net security account. So what I've been seeing, um, what I was referring to is uh, what they call an established entity. Like a lot of times, they say, well, if you're established, then, then they'll give you the terms. Uh, if you're a new business and you don't have three accounts reporting, you're not generating a paydex score. So right. a lot of people don't consider you established. Right. So if one of your first three accounts is where you don't have a paydex score, then you're likely going to have to end up making the hundred dollar purchase yeah, for three months. Yeah. Right. And then, but that's not going to report. That's just to get the net 30. Right. Then you have to make another three months of purchases just to, get it to report so ultimately yeah you could end up spending 350 before that even reports right that's very true okay well i mean this is stuff people need to know absolutely that's very important good point though good point um but you know and so i've seen it both ways you bring up a good point i've seen it both ways i've seen certain businesses um get approved for the net 30 but quill required a a 90-day seasoning so it's kind of like there's some little in-between stuff, too, where they just won't report it for the three months. Um, but it, I think a lot of it, if you've really lined up those foundational steps and you've really hit the mark on the name, the address, you know, your likely of getting approved is just so much greater. Mm-hmm. It is. Absolutely. I agree. All right. And the last account we wanted to go over today was Granger Industrial Supply. 
Here we go. Uh, 888-472-4643 uh, is their phone number. You can go to Granger.com if you're unfamiliar with what they are or that's how you actually get to them. Um, there are some Grangers in major cities as well. And so a lot but of they also ship, don't they? They ship. You can also pick it up from the warehouse. So reports to Dun Bradstreet with a fifty dollars minimum purchase. So they work with more than thirteen hundred suppliers. They have electrical, fastener stuff, fleet maintenance, HVAC, hardware, janitorial, um, pneumatics, power tools, pumps. This is where you buy a lot of the power tools yeah. for our fix and flip. Uh, right? Electrical, yeah. So GFIs, uh, all sorts of materials, mm -hmm. HVAC. Uh, AC stuff. So what do you need to qualify for that? Entity in good standing, the EIN number, the business address, down to Bradstreet number, business license, bank account. Um, sometimes they may ask for like uh, P&Ls if you're looking for a large line of credit. Say you're a plumbing company mm -hmm. and you're looking, you know, to open a right out the gate, you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollar line, then of course they're gonna want to see some more documentations to support that type of line of credit. Mm -hmm. But uh, if your business doesn't have an established credit score, they will require additional documents like accounts payable, income statement, balance sheets, et cetera. Um, a lot of, it's, it really depends a lot of times, you know, what does their system come back at with how risky you are? Um, and I've seen it a lot of times. I've seen, um, I've seen approvals instantly with, you know, with uh, no track record, but I've also seen, um, you know, they're wanting P&Ls and tax documents and all sorts of stuff. But it comes down to uh, really a lot of those foundational steps. What I think is so amazing about what you're sharing here is that if somebody takes the information that you've shared and they can follow all of those guidelines, they're going to get automatically approved for what, like a hundred dollar line or? Um, I've been seeing Granger anywhere from a thousand to three thousand dollars. <laughs> now, what what is the difference between somebody getting approved for a hundred, five hundred versus getting approved for like two thousand or three thousand? Um, and, and you're right. I mean, they may just only want to extend you a hundred dollars to start with. Um, the difference is risk. It's all about risk. It's all about how many of those little check marks you, uh, you meet, how, um, how well you've, uh, set up your business, how well you've, um, gone back and reviewed documents. To so the more accounts that you have reporting, then the lower the risk that they'll feel like it. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, too. Yeah. So if you already have, you know, three accounts before this point, mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to, you're going to have a lot better success. But if I'm coming out of the gate and I don't have that track record yet, uh, what about business license? How can that, how can that really help? Ooh, business license is a huge sense of credibility because it's, think about your driver's license. You mm -hmm. don't just use your driver's license to drive. Nope. You use that for verifying your identity across all walks of life. Um, you know, you use it for verifying your age, use it for verifying your location. So having your business getting address, bowling shoes. <laughs> getting bowling <laughs> shoes. <laughs> Wait, you can literally hand over your driver's license as a form of collateral. Uh, you know, like uh, if, if you've ever been to like the boardwalk and rented a bicycle, mm -hmm. then they want your driver's license. You can use that in exchange for something. So business license is no difference. You can use that business license in more ways than just operating. Mm -hmm. And that's huge to understand. So when a business that has a business license, uh, say you got two businesses side by side. Here mm -hmm. I am. I've got everything, but I don't have a business license. I don't really need one, so I don't have it. Right. You're a business. You don't need a business license either, but you have one. Everything else is the same. I apply for, say, a uh, uh, Granger, and they give me $500. You apply, and you get $3,000. Right. Just because of that one little difference? Right. Well, I mean, think about it. I don't need a driver's license. I don't have to have a driver's license. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I don't have to drive. But how many times just in, like we said, in daily life, I mean, are there a lot of people that won't do things with me because I don't have a driver's license that isn't even involving driving? Mm. Right. Interest. I really like this analogy. I mean, this is the first time I think we've ever talked about that, comparing it to that. But it's it's so important to understand that it is almost like a driver's license for your business. Yep. It's going to get you so far, even when it's not required. Just go ahead and get it. It's not necessarily required in a lot of places. Absolutely. 
Well, that's great. Let's get back. Let's get off of this and get back and clo close everything up and get everybody back to their day. What? Not everybody spends all day just talking about business credit. <laughs> Apparently not. Just you and I. We're the only ones that do that. Thank you for uh, sharing with us. I mean, because understanding the underwriting guidelines for Uline, Quill, and Granger, just getting that, that can get somebody off the ground. That can get them an established uh, paydex score. And then now they just need to get uh, three about three more accounts, and they'll have a, a robust enough score to that they can easily get, like, an Amazon card, or they can get a Walmart card. They can start getting other types of corporate cards, store cards, that they could then use to build their business credit. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for sharing that. So, um, and this is what we're saying. So once you have five or six different account vendor accounts, now you can go out and get some retail cards, store cards, right, and get some fleet cards. These are revolving accounts often. They have, a, a, sometimes there's some net 30 terms, net 55 terms, we've seen some net 60 terms. Right? But you need to get about three or more of these revolving store cards and combine that with about three or more fleet cards. Fleet cards are really good for fuel and repairing your vehicle. So that's uh, very handy to have depending on what type of business that you're in. But once you have that, once you have your vendor credit, your store credit, your fleet credit, you can now go to the top. That final, This is the final step. This is where everybody starts and they fail. But this is now where we have built it. We've built the foundation and we built it up uh, account by account to four, you know, at this point, we really only have about 10 accounts reporting, but this is where we can get those final four accounts. And so we can get universal cash credit cards. We're talking about Visa and MasterCards that are attached to like a, some type of gas card or store card that's been converted into a Visa or a MasterCard. And here's what's important. Once you get to this point, don't stop at 14. Keep building because are you going to keep using your net 30 accounts for the rest of your life, right? No, you're going to stop using those accounts. So you need to replace those accounts with other accounts because you need to always have anytime a creditor checks your report within the last six months, they need to see a minimum of 14 accounts reporting positively. So you really should build 20, 25 different accounts because you might not use all of them, but if you can use at least 14 of your accounts every month, then you'll always have an excellent business credit rating that you can use to go out and get uh, a lot of credit. So just using the process that we showed you, within six to 12 months, you can get $50,000 in trade line store cards, fuel cards, and universal cash credit cards. But once you have those 14 accounts reporting, you can use that that power of that business to go out and get up to an additional $150,000 in hybrid credit lines or credit cards. And you can get this for your business without using a personal guarantee because your business credit is fully established, mm -hmm. right? Now, folks, this is how you get business credit. This is how you get funding for your business. When the whole world seems like it's falling apart and your, your state is shut down, you've been told your business has been downsized, right-sized, homogenized, right? This is where you're able to say, you know what? No, I can get business credit. If I follow these steps, then I can build business credit. I can use business credit because when the banks start tightening restriction on personal credit, they do that to free up credit for businesses. The last credit to go is the business, the credit for businesses. And so if, if you're thinking that you're facing some hard economic times and you're like, my economy and the pandemic and everything is out of my control, look, it's time to get control. Get control back of your life. Get control back of your finances. Start business, a business and build business credit so that you can create an economy that you control. See, we're all in this together. This is what we're doing with our businesses. This is what our, all of our clients are doing. And this is what we want to encourage you. Don't give up. Don't uh, feel like you're a victim of all these circumstances. And don't wait for the people in Washington to solve your problems because that's a long wait for a train that's never going to come. You need to take control. Take control of your life. Take control of your finances. And experience the, that financial freedom that you can have of finally having uh, some control over what's happening to you. Break free of the system that is out of control and, and start establishing the system that you control. If you need help with that, contact us. My name is Joseph Smith. This is Ray Fleming. We are the Wise Guys in Ties. Our contact information is on the screen. We want to help empower you to use business credit to help fuel your dreams. Do whatever God put you here on this earth to do. 
So thank you so much for spending your lunch hour with us. Uh, we will see you tonight as we discuss credit banking with the wise guys and ties. That's tonight at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Until then, I want to say good night. God bless. And God bless.